Welcome to worship. We are worshiping this morning with the Shared Lutheran Ministry Churches of Fayette County, Texas, and we are recording at our church in Warrenton, St. John's Lutheran in Warrenton. We have a um, very big day going on here because in actuality, I have to tell you how important Phil A. Strike is to us in our recording ministry. If Vicar Cole and I are gone, then the other one just preaches. If Kristen can't be here, somebody else can play the piano and we can manage to sing the hymns. But when Phil is going on vacation, we end up having to record a whole bunch of worship services on the same day because nobody can do what Phil does. So Phil, we appreciate you. Have a fun time on vacation. <laughs> this uh, worship service was going to be broadcast on August 8th which is Vicar Cole's last Sunday with us. And in actuality, we're having a parking lot worship at 9 o'clock in the morning. 
on um, at Warrington Church because when he came, we were in the pandemic and we had parking lot worship for the first weeks that he was here. So we're going to send him off in the same way. But there will be a time for refreshments and visiting after the service is over. So the service that we're using today is basically the same one that we'll, that we're using at the parking lot worship. A couple of things going on this week of the 8th of August. On Tuesday, the choir is uh, getting together for their last time at 7 o'clock uh, in uh, the Reutersville Church. And on Saturday morning, we'll continue the Bible study at uh, 7.30 at Riverside Cafe, 8 o'clock on Zoom. I think that those are the announcements for this week. And we'll begin with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Our opening litany is Psalm 1. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or take the path that sinners tread or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they prosper. The wicked are not so but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Let us pray. Gracious God, your blessed Son came down from heaven to be the true bread that gives life to the world. Give us this bread always that he may live in us and we in him, and that strengthened by this food, we may live as his body in the world, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our readings today are ones that Vicar Cole has selected for his last Sunday with us. The first reading is from the 29th chapter of Jeremiah. For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord plans for your welfare and not for harm, to give you a future with hope. Then when you call upon me and come and pray to me, I will hear you. When you search for me, you will find me, if you seek me with all your heart. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from the first chapter of Philippians. I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you, because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to think this way about all of you, because you hold me in your heart. For all of you share in God's grace with me, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap, nor gather into barns. And yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you by worrying add a single hour to the span of your life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, 
what will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things. And indeed, your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, it has been quite the year. We had a church catch on fire and an explosion in one of the communities of our churches, and that was only in the first few weeks I was here. We also, during the year, had a tornado while we were gathered together for a council meeting two unexpected snowstorms, many tragic deaths, lots of brisket, parking lot worship, distanced worship, regular worship, and worship of every sort in between those three. As I have reflected back on this year and all of the work I got to do and all of the people I have gotten to meet, there are a few of many lessons that stick out. Lessons that I will carry on into the future and in my future ministry. One of these lessons is that God journeys with us and prepares a way before us even when there does not seem to be any way available. Or in the words of the gospel lesson I have selected for today, simply do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. During his Sermon on the Mount, Jesus teaches all the gathered people a number of lessons, one being that we do not need to worry about the future because God takes care of God's people. I have plenty I could be worried about. Amanda and I will pack up all of our earthly possessions tomorrow and start driving west. And although we know some of what the future holds, things are far from certain. We do not know exactly when we will be able to move into the parsonage at Amanda's church in Oceanside. We do not know when I will find a call or start work. We do not know all of the challenges, joys, and hardships that lay ahead of us in our ministry or even in our personal lives. You too have an uncertainty ahead of you. Pastor Marsha is retiring in just over a month and you will soon begin the call process as you discern how God is preparing a way before you all as well how God will continue to faithfully lead this shared ministry into the future. In the midst of all of this, we know that God will guide us and take us to where we are supposed to be. During his Sermon on the Mount, Jesus included this section against worrying because if we get caught up in all that we can imagine, what we could do for ourselves or what we could wish for, we would miss out on the exciting journey of following Jesus and having faith in God. Letting God be in control and lead us into the future is an indispensable part of Christian discipleship. Before coming out here to SLM, Amanda and I did not know we would be sent to Texas. I definitely didn't imagine being sent to four churches instead of just one. If we would have been worried about not knowing where we were going, if we would have tried to lead ourselves into the future, we wouldn't have ended up here. We would not have gotten to preach every week, get special dispensation to preside over the Eucharist, to live out in the country, and to learn not to worry so much and just focus on all of the major and important parts of ministry, teaching, preaching, visitation, community, and the like. I will be moving west, carrying with me a spirit of not being too worried about church changing or having to do things differently. 
Here, we have figured out how to be church when we couldn't meet together, when we had to be spaced out, and when we could return to normal. I also watched as our churches pivoted when we could not get a supply pastor for one of the two sides on Sunday morning, and you all creatively adapted and found solutions. By having watch parties, by having breakfast church, or a hymn sing with a recorded sermon. I will be carrying with me this spirit of church that is not worried about the little things, but instead is impassioned and passionate about the important things, about worship, about serving Jesus, about reaching out to our neighbors, and about growing in our faith. I will also be moving with a better understanding of connectedness. Connectedness to other Christians, other churches, and to the whole body of Christ. Some people might ask if SLM is one church or if it is four churches. I have found that the answer to that question is yes. We worship God and serve Christ together, but At the same time, we do things a little differently from one another at the same time. One of the beauties of SLM is how well we are connected within our four churches and how well we are connected outside of our four churches as well. We are deeply connected to others in this community by our work with and for Second Chance, Amen, the Waldeck Food Truck Ministry with the the Grange Area Ministerial Alliance, and with our ministry on the radio. We are small but mighty, and people know us because of the love we have for each other and because of the love we cannot help but share with our community. In addition to these lessons, we also have all of the examples of God's care in the natural world that Jesus names and brings to our attention too. Jesus calls our attention to the birds and to the lilies. Jesus says, Look at the birds of the air who neither sow nor reap or gather anything into barns, and yet God feeds even them. Or maybe look at the lilies instead, how they grow even though they neither toil or spin for their clothes. How God also clothes even the grass of the field, which is alive one day and dead the next. Jesus advises us not to worry about the things that are often easy to worry about, because God obviously takes care of these things for his birds, for his flowers, and for his people too. We are to strive instead for the kingdom of God and for righteousness to live into all that SLM is rooted in, loving God and loving neighbor, worshiping God and strengthening faith, being the church and making changes and pivoting when we need to. Amanda and I are driving west, not because we are confident in our own ability to solve the problems that lie ahead of us, but because we are confident in God and confident in God's provision. Because God will not let us down, and because we are better prepared for whatever lies ahead, because of this year we got to spend here, and all that we got to learn and be a part of. I will miss you, and I will miss SLM, but what lies ahead for us all is better than anything we could provide for ourselves or anything we could plan and bring about on our own accord. Thanks be to God.
We confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the Church, the world, and all of creation. For the Church of Christ in all its diverse forms, for mission developers, new mission starts, and all communities of faith exploring new models of ministry for the sake of the gospel, for congregations facing difficult decisions about their future, God in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the health and well-being of creation, for shade trees that provide refuge from the hot summer sun, for lakes, rivers, and oceans contaminated by pollution, and all who lack clean water. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those called to positions of authority in our legal system, we pray. For judges, lawyers, law clerks, and court employees who ensure the fair administration of justice. For corrections officers and prison chaplains, that they would deal mercifully with those who are incarcerated. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who cry out to you in their affliction, for exiles, refugees, and others who face long and difficult journeys, uncertain about the future, for all who mourn the death of a loved one, for all who are sick, especially those we name in our hearts before you. God, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. For this assembly gathered around your table, we pray. For those among us who bake bread and prepare the vessels for our communion celebration. For those who bring the food from this table to those who are homebound or hospitalized. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You may offer your own prayers or petitions at this time. Holy God, we give you thanks for the ministry of Cole McGlynn among us, for this year that has been a year of learning for him and for us, for the good ministry that we've been able to do together, for the growth that we have instilled in each other, for the faith that has allowed us to believe in you and to work to serve you in worship and in service. We pray for both Cole and Amanda that Going forward from here, they will have safe travels, that their first calls will be exciting, and that they will have long, long careers in serving you. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who have been raised to eternal life, we give thanks. With all the saints, we praise you for the bread of life that keeps us in your love forever. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We do take a moment to thank you for your offerings and for the giving of your time and talent and treasures, and let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, 
your body for the life of the world. Amen. Hear us, O Lord, as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace, remember the poor. Thanks be to God.